Hello everybody and welcome to Penguins to Go, your daily dose of Pittsburgh Penguins news and analysis. You can find us on YouTube at Inside the Penguins or anywhere you get your podcasts from. I'm your host Nick Verlansky and today let's talk a little bit about one of the names that has circulated throughout the media, throughout everywhere is basically John Gibson, right? Everybody has mentioned John Gibson of the Anaheim Ducks is a potential target for the Pittsburgh Penguins to address their goaltending issue this summer. A lot of people have talked about it. A lot of people. I mean, and for a while, too. The connection is obvious between him and the Penguins because, well, he's a Pittsburgh-area native. So the connection has been there for years. Trade rumors have been there for years. But I do want to address one article I read in the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette by Joe Starkey. He wrote in the Gazette that He's inclined to pursue Gibson, like a lot of people are. But he said, even if it means trading Jake Gensel or Brian Rust. He lost me there, right? I get it. There's questions about Tristan Jari's consistency, his ability to be the guy at the NHL level. His performance this season has clouded an already pretty overcast offseason for the Pittsburgh Penguins. And I also understand why John Gibson is a target in a lot of people's minds. And I'm not going to lie, I don't think it would be a bad option for the Pittsburgh Penguins. But trading Jake Gensel or Brian Rust, that goes, to me, personally, nothing against Joe, but to me, that's a bridge too far. This isn't a move, in my eyes, that the Penguins should be making. Would I move Gensel or Rust for a bona fide, no doubt, this is a number one goaltender. Yes, but the list of those guys is very small in my eyes. Right? You obviously have the ones that aren't moving. Vasilevsky's never going anywhere. Igor Shosturkin is not going anywhere. Ilya Sorokin is not going anywhere. UC Soros is questionable. I would trade Brian Rust for UC Soros. I don't know if I would trade Jake Gensel. I don't I don't think I would trade Jake Gensel. Even if he's entering the final year of his contract. Is John Gibson a guy in my eyes that fits that description? No. Not right now he's not. Gibson over the last 4 seasons with the Anaheim Ducks has played 195 games. In those games he has a 902 save percentage and a 3.32 goals allowed average. Compare that to Jari, who has played 177 games, so while everybody is worried about Jari's health, Jari's ability to stay in the lineup, that's 18 less games. John Gibson's apparently a workhorse. Tristan Jari can't stay in the lineup. 18 more games over the past four seasons. And he has a 915 save percentage. Much better. And a 2.62 goals allowed average. Also much better. Now what Starkey correctly points out is the Anaheim Ducks defense has been trash over those four seasons. Meanwhile, the Penguins have kind of had a roller coaster, right? Last season in 2021-22, they had a really good defense in front of Tristan Jari. This season, they really didn't. Bottom third of the league. It's not like it was that much better than the Ducks this season. But I'll give that to anybody that loves Gibson over Jari. Gibson did have to deal with poor goaltending. Gibson has shown previously that he could be a number one standalone guy in this league. Play 50, 55 games, even in a league where you're not seeing that very often anymore. It's not being asked of number one goaltenders, unless they're the guys I mentioned before, basically the Russian three. But the one stat that I look at that does take defense into account a little bit more is goal saved above expected and goal saved above average. Where it does take it in more, I will say it's not a perfect stat. And if it was close, that'd be one thing. But in the last four seasons, John Gibson has a negative 29.8 goals saved above average. Which means he's allowed 30 goals more than an average goaltender would would allow in that time span. 
Meanwhile, Tristan Jari's numbers in that specific, specific statistic, tongue twister there, 40.6 goals saved above average. When the difference is 70 goals saved above expected, then it's not worth trading Jake Gensel or Brian Rust in my eyes. Right? And you can say all you want about John Gibson. He's only 29, which is a lot younger than when I initially heard his name brought up earlier in the season, at least for this round of rumors. I was like, ah, he's still only 29. That's crazy. But add that to what his contract looks like. And I'm not trading a top six winger for John Gibson. That contract, like I mentioned, four more years on it, $6.4 million a season. Now, is Tristan Jari going to get $6.4 million a season? I would hope not. I would see him getting a pay raise. Maybe pushing $6 million if the if the Penguins or whoever decides to sign him is being generous. But he's not going to get $6.4 million, and he's not going to get $6.4 million for four years. Not coming off the injuries that he came off of this season. Now, it remains to be seen whether or not the Pittsburgh Penguins decide to go a different route. And I'm not trying to, to crap on John Gibson. Because... At the end of the day, I still think he is a viable option. I just don't think he's worth the price of admission. If that's what it is, if it's a a top six winger for the Pittsburgh Penguins, it's not the price of admission for John Gibson. Especially Gensel. He is a two-time 40-goal scorer in this league, a three-time 30-goal scorer if you include the two 40-goal seasons, and then this year when he scored 30, the quietest 30, I think, I believe he had 35 that I've ever seen in a season. A lot of people consider this a down year for Jake Gensel because, you know, he had that drought between, I believe it was December and February where he scored only a couple of goals, but really, even though it didn't seem like it, the guy put up 36 goals and 73 points in 78 games. He was a great player this season for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Might not have driven play as much as he usually does, but he still led the team in goal scoring. And Brian Rust is is another story entirely because he signed that lucrative extension last summer. And no, he, he didn't live up to it this season. But in a down year, which we can all agree was a down year, he still put up 20 goals. Despite his shooting percentage being the lowest it's been since 2015-16. And let's not also forget that most of these other years, he spent almost the entire season as a member of the top power play unit. He was supplanted for most of the year this year by Ricard Raquel, so he wasn't getting the power play looks. He was playing a lot more time on the penalty kill, which I've told you before is going to hurt his goal-scoring numbers, and it did this season. Do I expect him to continue to be a only 20-goal scorer, scoring 20 goals and shooting under 10% shooting percentage? No, I think that's probably going to rise a little bit more than what you expected. And with the team control at a decent rate, you don't trade Brian Rust either. Especially considering this team isn't just a goaltender away. It's not. What are they a goaltender away from? Making the playoffs? Like, better goaltending? Yeah, they probably would have made the playoffs this year. In this playoffs, you've watched them for a week. Do you think the Pittsburgh Penguins, what we watched over 82 games, would have been able to keep up with the Carolina Hurricanes? Would have been able to take down the Boston Bruins? Because those two teams look much better now than they did in the regular season at the end. They kicked it into another gear. Now, would the Penguins have kicked it into another gear? Possibly. But with the goaltending the way it was, with the defense the way it was, with the bottom six the way it was, I don't think they 
are a goaltender away from contending for a Stanley Cup, which is the point of everything right now, is getting Crosby and Malkin another Stanley Cup. So while I like John Gibson, and for that matter, I like Joe Starkey too. I listen to him almost every day, right? I'm not trying to crap on these two guys, but I just don't think the juice is worth the squeeze in that aspect. I don't hate the idea, like I said, of John Gibson coming to the Pittsburgh Penguins, but sending away a top winger in the process is just too much. The Penguins have so many other needs that they need to fill besides goaltender, and while everybody agrees, or almost everybody agrees, that goaltending is probably priority number one, the upgrade from Jari to Gibson is not worth the price of admission. That's just one man's opinion. You could ask... 10 other people, and yeah, maybe the 10 other people are like, you know what, it's worth it. To them, I say, all right, when the Pittsburgh Penguins don't have any consistent top six scoring next season, you know why. Especially considering who knows what's going to happen with Jason Zucker. You might already have to fill a top six role. Make that two top six spots that you have to fill, plus reconstructing a bottom six, plus hopefully reconstructing or at least improving the defense, plus everything with a goaltender even though I guess that would answer your goaltending questions. But still, add everything else into that mix. Just too expensive for my blood. But that's going to do it for this episode of Penguins to Go. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, you can find us on YouTube at Inside the Penguins or anywhere you get your podcast from. We'll see you guys next time.